Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I have something a bit different. I'm going to be making some Christmas bookmarks and I'm going to laminate them with my laminator here. I've got it turned on and it's heating up and I've moved everything away from the back of it. It gets hot around here so don't place this against anything that you're working on. These are some of the bookmarks I have made already. I do have some tutorials for these on my channel. This one here um, is a tutorial on how to create this beautiful coloured glimmer paper from plain silver glimmer paper and this can be turned into a bookmark and this is just using one of the Tim Holtz tags and a thank you die cut from Stampin' Up and a bit of ribbon. So that's one version of a bookmark and one size that I like. I have a tutorial for these bookmarks on my channel so these are a couple of bookmarks or you could use them as gift tags but I like putting a very long piece of tail on the end of it and they become bookmarks and there is a tutorial to make eight of these gold embossed watercolor cards on my channel it's been a very popular video so I made eight backgrounds at once and then gold embossed them you can see the gold and then added some embellishments created cards from some but these two bookmarks are something that might give you some ideas for bookmarks yourself and this one I have a tutorial for six of these on my channel this is six stamped herb bookmarks and I've made a posy of fresh herbs as well so that is also on my channel this is another one that I made I don't have a tutorial on this but I really like it I'm just going to hold it this way so it'll sit in the frame you can see it has some debossing in here it's it's faint it might not show up on, on camera and then I've have some die cuts that have been embossed as well and stuck on the top and they were made using this Sizzix thinlets die this is a Tim Holtz die and this was called uh, what's it called I don't know I'm going to give you the number up there so it's 660955 these tiny tiny little leaves and I cut that from rust paper now this is a method of colouring your paper to make it look like it's rusted and all you do is dip it in various substances in baths and let them take and it's a plain. You can see this was the paper that went into the bath. This is what came out of the bath. If you're interested in me doing a tutorial on this rust paper technique, let me know in the comments below. And if you're looking to find any of those other bookmarks too and can't find them, just leave me a comment and I'll let you know exactly which videos they are on. But today we are going to do some Christmas craft fair laminated bookmarks and what you'll need for that is your laminator and lots of scraps so I have a whole stack of double-sided paper and you know some of the papers didn't make the cut like this one for instance it's nice enough paper but I just wanted something a bit more festive um, things like this is gorgeous I seem to have a lot of these cut into strips I don't know what I had planned to use them for but I think that's one of my favorite of the designs most of these papers are from Stampin' Up, but some of them are from other scrapbook companies as well. Just whatever you have in your stash that you think would look nice. Look at this cute little guy here with the little trees on it and a little gold Christmas tree. I've got another one with little gingerbread men on one side. So just chop it up, really. And that's what I'm naming this video, I think, chop it up. This one's cute. Little nutcrackers on one side, plate on the other. This would be lovely. And some of them I'm going to actually make sure I get the design in this way. And some of them I'm just going to cut however I like. I'm going to do all sorts of different sizes for you. And I have my laminating pouches ready to go. The other thing you'll need is a hole punch. To punch a hole in the top once they're laminated. A long pair of scissors. These I bought from Costco. They're really nice long shears. And some tassels. Look at these, I have 200 tassels that I purchased on Amazon. And I had in mind when I purchased them that they'd make wonderful bookmarks. But also I wanted to get together some more gear for my Christmas craft fair stash. So that's what else we'll be using. If you don't have tassels, they won't look quite as pretty. I'm just saying you could use ribbon, but I think these tassels 
I think there's 200 of them and I think I paid around $10 for them on Amazon. So, you know, if you're looking for some good cheap tassels and they're silky, they're beautiful. Might have been $12, I can't remember, but it was very inexpensive for the number of tassels that's in there. So let's get chopping. And I'm just going to chop up different sizes of these. They're not going to all be the same. So I'll bring my trimmer in and do that now. So these are already done. I don't need to trim them down. I don't need my trimmer, they're already done. So all I need to do is line them up in a laminated sheet. And I'm going to line up as many as I can down at that edge. And keep them as straight as I can. I like to tuck them right in. So they're nice and level. So they start off with a good solid edge. You can put them upside down, right side up, however you like, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to put some at the back as well. Let's just pop those in where I think they're going to fit. And I'm going to feed them through. Couldn't be simpler really. And you can hold it up with your hand so they don't all, these two don't flop out. It's very satisfying. So I have been getting ready for the Christmas craft fair. I've got lots and lots of cards and I'll be showing you in a future video how I package my cards up for sale as well. And I'm also doing some hot chocolate packets and tea packets and coffee packets. So I'll be showing you the design that I use for those and lots of other fun things as well. So here they are, laminated, and it's a bit hot when it comes out, so just be careful. Right, now I'm just going to let it cool down a little bit. I don't want to cut into that end. This end's quite hot. This end's cooled down. It doesn't take long for them to cool down. But you can see how cool this is. We now have five laminated bookmarks. And these aren't level, but that's okay. I can work with that with my scissors. So all I'm going to do now is chop that down. Now you don't want to chop right in to the paper because it'll just fall apart. What's holding these into the laminated space are the strips of laminated pocket around it. So I'm just going to start cutting and leaving about an eighth of an inch around the outside. And the long scissors really help with this. So I'm cutting my first one. I'll do one and then I'll come back and do another one. This has got to be one of the fastest crafts out there. Uh, it's just the length of time it takes to go through the laminator, but you can be preparing your next lot while you're waiting for it to go through. So here's our first piece. And I'm really liking the look of that. They can be quite sharp on the edges, so I like to round the corners just to take away from that, that ouchy <laughs> wear on the edge of it. Now, you don't have to do this. I just think it makes them look a little bit more professional doing it that way. Go around all the corners. Next step is to punch a hole and this hole punch just came from my local news agent i push it in as far as i can really in fact i think i've punched this one a little bit too low i think the next one because it really is going to chop into the tassel a little bit too much it might work out let's have a look Oh, that's pretty good. There's a sharp edge on there I'm just going to cut off. I don't really like this corner rounder from Stampin' Up. I've got another, another one from Creative Memories that I much prefer. Um, if I can find it, I'll use that. Okay, so there's our first bookmark. And doesn't that look professional? Double-sided, beautiful silky tassel. And it's cost pennies to make, really. So this is one of my best sellers for my Christmas craft fair. You could put them in cellophane if you wanted to. Um, I don't bother with these. Um, I do put my cards in cellophane, of course, to make them look a lot more professional and finished off. And I usually pop a business card in the back as well. There's the first one done. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to speed up and I'm going to get through these and then we're going to do some longer ones and I'll show you what they look like. looking good and work these would all work extremely well in most sized books look at that one i love the black and the cream oh so good all right let's get on with the next size that i think is a really useful size to have i'm going to trim down some of these that have a design on them so that we can actually see the design um, this one here is the nutcracker i think we'll go with him first so if i take it down the center there so I'm not measuring, I'm just going with the, the size of the paper here and where the design fits on that. I can actually choose which part I'm going to use as a bookmark. And I'm going to leave this side as is, look at that one. So that's going to give us a nice skinny one. This one's a little bit fat, for want of a more technical term, it's a bit fat. So I'm going to cut some of this off on the edge there because it doesn't quite look bookmarkish enough. Now that's a really thin one, that's a good fat one. So I'll give you the measurements for that. So the fatter one is two and a quarter inches and the smaller one is one and three quarter inches and they are both six inches long. So you can make smaller ones if you want to. That's just an option there. And that's how you would use the most of the pattern on the paper. You might just have to cut some off so that you don't have a strange edge on one of them. So that's a tip for you there. I really love this paper here because it's more of a foliage paper on one side and it's Christmas paper on the other. So you can turn it over in your book depending on whether you want a, a spring type bookmark or whether you want a winter type bookmark. So I like this one for dual use. And if you can find papers like that, it's good to have. I also really, really love this paper for a bookmark. It's got the pretty flowers on the back of it. And I'm going to make this one quite long. And I don't want it so long that it's going to stick out the end of the book, but I'm going to cut this one quite a bit longer. So this one measures seven and a half inches by two and one eighth of an inch. So that's quite a nice sizable bookmark and this will fit in our laminating pockets. This one, I want to cut down with the design showing. So for this, I'm going to cut away some of the edges and I will be wasting some paper here. I understand that, but I really want to get the design on this bookmark. You can see there's a definite line where you can cut so that you get the full image on one side. So that is perfect, is it not? And then on the back, you've just got another spring type one. So these two are different ways to create based on the papers that you have. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get the best use of the pattern 
and I want to get some full gingerbread men on this side or people and I want to get some full mittens trees and stars on the other side and you can see by cutting them to a certain shape that they look really really good so I'm going to cut around here and I'm going to get that line going down of um, I want to get all of these shapes in I've got all of these shapes in I might get just a little bit of some of these but you can see how by playing with it you can design something that looks really flat you see how we've got something that's got a full-on design on it now it's reading really well not quite so busy so here's some more to go through the laminator I'll just grab my little two different sizes here Look how fabulous these look. Just brilliant. And here's the back. And they're quite hot, so while they're cooling down, I'm going to give you my next. And the first thing I'm going to create is a craft mat. I'm going to trim off half an inch on two sides. So half an inch that way, and half an inch this way. And this is going to give us our craft palette. So if you if you like to use distress inks and you like to smoosh your inks down onto a, um, your work surface, this is perfect for doing just that. I'm going to line it up so that it's looking quite nice. Make it nice and even. It's looking pretty good. It needs to come up this side just a little. Going to feed that through i'm going to chop up these chop it up okay so there's our craft surface let that cool down so this becomes like a craft mat now you might have seen um, other craft mats that are quite expensive so this is where you can smoosh your ink down you can clearly see the colour that's happening as you smoosh it down and you can use water and play around with it like this mix up your colours and pick it up and use it for crafting and you can get your colours going on that it's perfect and what will happen is when you're finished with it there you go you've got your colours coming up there nice when you're finished with it you just take your wet wipes and you clean it off so that gives you a clean surface for crafting on so how good is that so these can be marketed as craft mats and i like using them when i'm using my watercolor paint so that it doesn't bead up you can actually see the color underneath it and another thing you can laminate is a sheet of grid paper so I have this one here. The whole piece is too big to fit into my laminator. If I had a large laminator, I could probably do something with this. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down and use it as a craft grid sheet. And I'm going to just chop it off here. That's the centre line. And I'm going to chop a little bit more off here because if I chop off this side, I'm going to lose my numbers. But we're just going to sacrifice a little bit more. You can see how that's just a little bit too wide. So we need to probably take about a quarter inch off where we've chopped it in half on both sides. Now, if you had the larger laminator, you could make a complete one of those, which is pretty good. Okay, so this is going to fit in nicely. So we're going to feed that through next. Send that one through. One centimetre on two sides. And then I'm going to cut it down the halfway mark. So this now measures 
28 and a half centimeters so 14 and a quarter will be my measurement so it's going to be about there two pieces the same size roughly the same size and I'm going to laminate both of those I'm going to tuck this one right into the edge that'll give us maximum space up the other end and then just line this one up the same way we're going to get two paint palettes out of one sheet of cardstock and one laminating sheet I'm feeding that in just holding this till it goes through so that's going to work for you as a paint palette so you'll be able to do some swatching run your paint on here be perfect so we've got two grid sheets or two half grid sheets but they're useful for lining up the cards and stamping on. Then we've got our palette for our Swiss Oxide inks and our wet media. And we've got two small palettes for our watercolour painting. So we can put our paints on that one. And this just needs to be cut down. And I'll use my trimmer for that because I want a nice even line. We've got two palettes. So while we're at it, we've got some really useful things for crafters. So you could put these in a crafters box if you wanted to, you know, put in some cardstock or card fronts or designer paper, all sorts of things for crafters, and just add this as one of the little surprise elements that goes with. And it's cost pennies. Okay, so let's get these done. Now these are directional, so we're going to get them in the right direction. Just turn them over and make sure you don't have a direction on the other side. And we're going to get our hole punch, why not? You could go, what colours? I've got like a black, a red and a green. Lots of black in that one. I think I've got a black tassel. Look at that pretty as and looks nice on both sides that's another good one like that and there's the back and then last but not least tassel right there between the two and then this one I kind of like the look of the gold on this oh yes that's very nice and the back very very good we've got our craft sheet and you probably see this in some of my videos we've got our laminated half craft mats the lining up cards and stamping and then we've got some paint palettes for painting on and remember I have tutorials on my channel for these bookmarks I have a tutorial for this one and I have a tutorial for this one all on my channel and the other ones are here we go Oh, that is so pretty, that one. There's all our bookmarks. For craft fairs and what fun that is I hope you enjoyed that today I enjoyed doing that I've got so much ready for next year now so I'm thrilled 
If you have some fabulous best sellers at Christmas craft fairs, let us know in the comments what your top sellers are. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.